Hey guys, today's video is sponsored by Audible. Get a free month with my link in the description. Listen to the latest Star Wars books on demand wherever, whenever. This is how I listen to all my Star Wars content that comes out. Every audiobook is filled with officially licensed Star Wars music, voice acting, sound effects, and more. So this month's pick for me is Star Wars The Bounty Hunter book number one, The Mandalorian Armor. Now this is a Legends audiobook, but it's pretty fun. Especially with Book of Boba Fett coming up, it'll help you get in the mood. As the Rebellion gathers force, Prince Zizor proposes a cunning plan to the Emperor and Vader. Smash the power of the Bounty Hunters Guild by turning its members against each other. Only the strongest and most ruthless will survive, and they can be used against the Rebellion. It's a job for the fiercely independent Boba Fett, who jumps at the chance to destroy his rivals. So as an Audible member, you get one free credit to an audiobook every month for any title in the premium selection. It doesn't have to be just Star Wars, either. It can be the latest bestseller, biography, fiction, nonfiction, stand-up, whatever you want. Those titles are yours to keep forever in your Audible library. You also get full access to the popular Plus catalog. This is filled with thousands and thousands of audiobooks, original entertainment, guided fitness and meditation, sleep tracks for better rest, and podcasts galore. Everything is included with your membership, so you can download and stream all you want, no credits needed. Visit audible.com slash Star Wars Theory or text Star Wars Theory to 500-500. Hey guys, so today's fanfiction has two endings, and one that ends really dark, and one that ends really light. So I'm gonna have to separate these two into different videos at different times. So today's will be in between, kind of, you know, with a bittersweet ending, compared to the super dark one that I'll create later on some other time. So let's begin. On Mortis, Anakin was granted the clairvoyance to see his future and what it held. He saw how the Jedi betrayed the galaxy and how Padme would die. He saw himself become Darth Vader and the power he would have through his newly tormented life. Now, Lucasfilm, back when George Lucas owned it and The Clone Wars wasn't cancelled, created a fanfiction of this very topic, which I remember reading in my early 20s, and actually just now recently too. It was where Anakin and the Sun leave Mortis to fight Palpatine and Yoda, who actually teamed up. It's a crazy cool fanfiction that they made, and it's the closest thing to canon considering it's, you know, George Lucas approved, or, you know, Lucasfilm approved, from the Star Wars Clone Wars Infinities magazines, issue number seven. Now, I'm gonna cover that in another video and review it. However, today I wanna write my own story and go off on a bit of a different ending. So in the original story in the Clone Wars, Anakin's mind was wiped and he forgot of what his soon-to-be reality would become, which we saw in Revenge of the Sith, leading to the creation of the Death Star and Luke Skywalker and so on. In today's fanfiction, let's theorize on what would have happened had Anakin not had his mind wiped and actually left Mortis with the Sun. Now I believe Anakin was destined to become more powerful than the Sun once he completed his training and reached his full potential. That said, when put in times of despair and stress, Anakin was able to exhibit feats more powerful than normally believed. This was simply due to his emotions making him stronger. When Anakin fought Dooku in Revenge of the Sith, it wasn't until he was taunted that he drew upon his emotions and actually defeated Dooku. When subduing the son and daughter on Mortis, while they threatened to eliminate Obi-Wan Kenobi or Ahsoka Tano, his anger and fear overpowered them both. I kind of see Anakin like the Hulk, sort of. Unless he's really angry, he's much more of a dormant Hulk, maybe we could even say, you know, Bruce Banner. And then when he uses his emotions, then he turns into the fully-fledged Hulk. Anakin and the son would leave Mortis, but not without killing the father with the dagger. And eliminating Obi-Wan and Ahsoka. Now nothing could get in their way as they headed for the real realm. Skywalker and the son would head to the Jedi Temple. Now remember, this is way before Revenge of the Sith, so Yoda isn't off on Kashyyyk. He's still at the Jedi Temple along with the other Jedi. He feels a great disturbance in the Force, but the dark side clouds everything as he calls for an immediate Jedi Council. Anakin and the Sun land down. As Anakin marches in, the Sun disintegrates the Temple Guards with a mere glance. Now keep in mind, he doesn't walk, but floats behind Anakin, like a third-person camera, sort of, merely observing and having his fun here and there, too. They would slaughter the Jedi and wipe them out swiftly, until they head to the Jedi Council Chambers, where all the Jedi Masters were sitting and speaking about what is to come, not realizing that it was already here. Anakin moved like never before, killing most of the lower-ranking Jedi Masters, much like Palpatine did, but faster. The Chosen One harnessed the full powers of the dark side as he moved with fury, his blue blade piercing the hearts of those that once cared and helped him grow from a youngling. Yoda and Master Windu were left, 
As more Jedi tried to enter the doors, the sun waved his hand and they all dropped motionless, their eyes rolling back into their skulls. Anakin turned his head to the sun, his yellow eyes beaming with hatred. Skywalker, what has become of you? Said Yoda. I'm doing what you always wanted, masters, bringing balance. And with that last word, he ducked and plunged his blue blade into the heart of Mace Windu as Yoda backed up into the corner and jumped over Anakin only to be frozen in midair and cut down. Anakin's powers were tripling by the minute. Leaving the Jedi Temple in a smoky fire, they headed to the Chancellor's office for the sun's instructions. Anakin had seen his vision. He knew the Emperor to be was Palpatine, the Sith Lord all along, Darth Sidious. Palpatine was angered that this being, the sun, has claimed Anakin over him. He felt his presence and thought of two scenarios. The first one being to fight the sun, to which Anakin may join in and Sidious would lose, and not only lose his life, but also lose Skywalker. The second scenario, well, we're about to find out. Seeing that the sun had claimed Anakin over him, all of his work in manipulating Skywalker was for naught, and the sun was going to pay. However, he didn't know how to kill this immortal being. Palpatine would try to work with the sun. He would seek the knowledge of all the ancient Sith to learn how to defeat this god. Searching for the answer in Anakin's mind, he realized this was what Plagueis had once briefly spoke of in passing. The ones they called Force Wielders. Of course, he said internally. The sun made Sidious pledge allegiance to him. Now the sun normally wouldn't do this, however he recognized that Sidious was truly the closest thing to the embodiment of the dark side that he had ever come across, however in a mortal body. He was intrigued, and it was merely his interest and curiosity that kept Palpatine alive for a little bit longer. Sending Sidious on some errands to prove himself worthy and wipe out the Jedi throughout the galaxy. While him and Skywalker continued their business on Coruscant, Sidious would of course find Mortis in order to find the dagger. This was the key to killing the sun. As he learned from ancient texts and scrolls, he knew exactly what to do. Meanwhile, Anakin claimed his rightful place as the Emperor of the galaxy through sheer force. As people feared him, they stayed obedient. Any who opposed him were eliminated, as the sun watched with a smile on his face. No, there will be order, he thought. Anakin and his new master were unstoppable. Once claiming himself the rightful Emperor of the galaxy, he went to see Padme. As he landed his ship on her terrace, she ran out to meet him. She was mortified of who he had become and the things that he had done. As she looked over his shoulder to see the sun, never leaving his side like a shadow, she shuddered. Padme was the only thing that could really break into Anakin. This was Anakin's kryptonite. It was his weakness, but also his strength, depending on whose side you were on. She told him to come back to her and to leave this sun. He doesn't control me. No one does. I have brought peace to this galaxy, Padme. Don't you see? Padme backs away in such fear, he continues to step closer. Where's Obi-Wan? She asked. Where's Ahsoka? I don't want to hear about Obi-Wan. Anyone who does not follow the orders of the Emperor of the Galaxy needs to be killed. As the sun moves his hand to eliminate Padme, Anakin uses the force to freeze him in place. He looked up from the ground. A gold ring of fire emanated from his eyes. Skywalker was truly the force. Don't touch my wife. The sun broke free from Anakin's grasp and rose above him. You dare turn your powers on me? Anakin was shocked with red force lightning as the sun laughed above him. I will have order! Palpatine entered Mortis, only to find Anakin's ship there, broken. Ahsoka lay lifeless and Obi-Wan next to her. He made his way to the main structure on the planet as he saw the dead body of the father laying there his old beard and wrinkles indicative of wisdom and immortality. Or so he was. Palpatine looked around. He was alone. <laughs> Palpatine sharply turned his head to the lifeless body before him. Walking over, he saw the father's closed eyes wincing in pain. He is still alive. Sidious so put a hand on the father's temples, much like he had Anakin's on Mustafar in another life. How do I kill him? The father opened his eyes vaguely to meet Palpatine's gaze. As he squinted to see, his face turned into horror. These were the same eyes of his son, only different. These were in a mortal vessel. How? <laughs> Sidious didn't understand the blabbering of this ancient being, nor did he care. He only sought the wisdom to defeat 
the one who controlled Skywalker and pledged to foil his entire operation in the galaxy. As Palpatine got to his feet, he noticed the father wasn't laying perfectly flat on his back, as if something protruding from behind. He turned him over with the force to see a large dagger in his spine. Grabbing it, he removed it with a powerful grasp aided by the force. Holding it up to the moonlight, he observed it as he kicked the father back into his original position. Looking down upon him, he said, Shame. The knowledge I could have learned. Palpatine left Mortis with the dagger, leaving the father to die. He headed back for Coruscant. Skywalker began to stand. As he saw Padme crying in terror, she ran to the sun to push him when he choked her in place, much like Anakin had done in the original timeline, however now with much more force and power. Skywalker sent a surge of lightning at the sun, knocking him back as he ran to Padme to catch her. He didn't know how he did it, only that he pushed the force with hatred and anger in all directions. Everything's going to be okay, my love, he said. She was unconscious. She had hit her head on the ground very violently. Skywalker rose to his feet, his anger consuming him now. Dark clouds began to swirl overhead. Coruscant turned into night. As lightning crackled in the sky, the sun was furious. You will throw it all away for some mortal woman? Anakin showed no hesitation as he moved with the hatred in his heart, cemented his entire life. Hatred for Watto, Sebulba, the Huts, the Tuscans, and what they did to his mother, the Jedi, the Separatists, and most of all, the Sun. For if he didn't end this now, Padme would die, and he would be a slave to this monster like he had been his whole life. Just to different masters, forever. The Sun blocked all of Anakin's attacks. His powers grew as Skywalkers blossomed. Beating Anakin to a pulp and shocking him with red force lightning, he sent him charred and burned next to Padme, who finally woke up to see her husband dying. I am all powerful, all knowing, immortal user of the force. I am the darkness. As he continued to shock Anakin, Skywalker screamed out in pain to the skies. St st stop! Please! <laughs> No one will save you. When will you learn? You cannot kill me. But I can. As Sidious appeared behind the sun, plunging the dagger into his spine, the divine poetry of the father and the son's demise resulted in the clouds sparking and casting fire upon Coruscant. Hitting buildings and speeders, blasting parts of the balcony that Anakin lay, the sun shrieked into the sky as he turned around to see Sidious smiling. Tendrils of blue electricity coursed a blade, as per Palpatine's design. The sun, with his last bit of power, touched the temples of Palpatine, turning him into stone. He let go of Sidious and watched him fall to the depths of Coruscant, so far that he couldn't even be seen anymore. And just like that, much like how Vader saved Luke, Palpatine saved Anakin, in a twisted, similar way like a father to a son. The embodiment of the dark side removed the dagger from his back as black mist spilled out of his body. He was still alive, but he was very weakened. The time was now, Anakin thought. He looked back at Padme and smiled. She knew what was about to happen, what he was about to do, and she clung to his robes with all of her might, preventing him from leaving. As he slipped out of it, much like he did when he fought Dooku, he jumped into the air, summoning his chrome-hilted lightsaber and ignited the blue fire into the chest of the sun, killing him, finally, as they both fell to their doom. Padme clenched her husband's robes, tears filled her eyes, and ran down her cheeks. Anakin, she whimpered. She lay there for hours, crying, until R2-D2 and C-3PO came to help her to her feet. Eventually, her guards arrived, including Captain Panaka and Bail Organa. Padme would go on to reform the Senate and the Republic. Anakin did bring peace, as he intended. However, only when he was no longer breathing. The remaining Jedi in the galaxy would reform the Jedi Temple over time, and things would return stronger than they were, but never forgetting the ones who fought for their freedom. Hope you guys enjoyed this more of a happier ending, I guess you could say, at least in comparison to the one that I have written out, which is extremely dark and twisted which I know you guys will probably like, but I figured, hey, it's the holidays, maybe we need something happy and, well, sort of happy. I hope you enjoyed it regardless. Please leave a like on this video if you enjoy these fan fictions. I love making them. I have since I started the channel over five years ago. Thank you so much, everybody, for listening and watching. I hope you have a great day, and I will see you in the next video on Star Wars Theory. Until then, remember, the Force 
will be with you always. <laughs>